Coronaviruses similar to COVID-19 have been found in bats and pangolins across Asia. Scientists from Duke NUS have discovered viruses circulating from Japan and China to Thailand. They say this could help trace the origins of COVID-19 and how it first spread to humans. One of the authors of the study is Professor Wang Lin Fa from the Duke NUS Emerging Infectious Diseases Program. Thanks for joining us this evening. Uh, firstly, why are these species thank you for such, having me. Why are these species such hot reservoirs for carrying coronaviruses? And is there a way to wipe out such uh, zoonotic threats without harming the wildlife that could carry them? First of all, we know why bats uh, are such a good reservoir for virus in general. But we still don't understand why a subspecies uh, group of bats, rhinoceros bats, are such a good reservoir for SARS like coronavirus. So that's the answer. And in terms of how can we control them right now, because they are wildlife, they are flying mammals, I don't think that we have a way really to prevent that uh, for bats to carry virus. And they have had a virus for millions, millions of years. So I think the best way is to really reduce contact and not only reduce contact of bats and human, but also bats and other animals. Well, Professor Wang, viruses have been around for a very long time. So given the prevalence of them among animals, what are the risks to humans? Yeah, so the risk to human is there and the bats to human transmission is rare and the risk is low. But as I said, you know, if bats transmitted to other wildlife, and uh, for SARS, we know the SARS-1, you know, 2003, we know civets were involved in the transmitting. And for this one, you know, uh, pangolins were suspected. So we just provided fresh evidence to suggest that pangolin definitely can be infected. Whether pangolin is the animal transmitting to a human needs more research. And besides consuming the animals, how can the viruses be transmitted? Yeah, so consuming animals, you know, is actually the least likely way of transmitting because uh, once it's cooked, you know, the virus will be uh, uh, killed, basically, inactivated. So most of the transmissions, like, you know, so the WHO mission just concluded their investigation yesterday, and they had a press conference in Wuhan. So one of the hypotheses is that this uh, wildlife animal market, right? So if animals are infected, go to the market, you know, contaminate the stores and the doors and the, you know, toilets and, uh, 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 you know, and then you can, from the contaminated environment, then can be transmitted to human. And unfortunately for COVID-19 is that that was followed by quite rapid human to human transmission. Mm. Well, Professor Wang, the WHO has suggested that cats can also carry coronaviruses. And given that we're now living so much closer to wildlife than before, how vulnerable are our domesticated animals? And should there be additional safeguards? Yeah, so this is another complication that in a, a zoonotic disease outbreak, you know, like for SARS, we were able to eradicate that before the virus adapt in human and then transmit back to animals. And for COVID-19, unfortunately, that has happened. So we know that humans now have given the virus to minks, to cats, to tigers, to gorillas, you know. So definitely that will increase the further difficulty of trying to control the outbreak. Because if we establish a new reservoir in domestic animals, and that I think will be much more difficult, you know, to control the human transmission. The fortunate side is that, yes, cats can be infected, but looks like they are not easily to be infected and they cannot transmit really among themselves readily. You know, if that happens, then really we're looking into possibility of animal vaccination to prevent the transmission of animal to animal and also animal to human. And bats and pangolins carry antibodies against coronaviruses. Are there ways to harness these antibodies and repurpose them to protect humans? Yeah, I mean, you know, we can learn from them, but to use the antibody from animals, you know, to, to treat human, I think uh, that's like, you know, 50 years old technology, you know, in the past that uh, we tried to treat human uh, bitten by a dog with rabies virus and we use horse serous, horse antibodies. 
these days, like the Regeneron and the, you know other monoclonal antibodies, using recombinant uh, you know uh, uh, engineering method, we can actually use actually produce human antibodies uh, in laboratory and which is much more potent and safe to use. So I think uh, use of animal serum to treat human, I think is the thing of past, but we can learn the immune system, why these animals produce antibodies and uh, without disease. So that's you know, part of our research group at Duke ES is we try to learn the immunity that these animals have and how we can tap into the knowledge and then really improve human response and the immunity against these and the future viruses. Professor Wang, the WHO investigation into the origins of COVID-19, they've just concluded that, uh, that mission, the, the one-month-long yeah. mission, and you would have been tracking that very closely. And the team have said that, yes, you know, COVID-19 came from an animal, but they don't know which one. Yeah. Now, taking into account that we've just been talking today about the fact that coronavirus are prevalent yeah. in wildlife and perhaps all over Asia, Southeast Asia as well, yeah. could, the, could COVID-19 have come from any uh, specific wildlife in this region as well then, not just in China? Yes, I mean, it's uh, any wildlife and any part of the world. Our paper, you know, and combined with the PUBG data right now suggests from Japan to Thailand over almost 5,000 kilometers range, uh, these viruses are circulating in bats. But this class of bats, we call them rhinorphats, goes all the way from our region to Middle East, Africa, and Europe. So I don't want to, you know, uh, uh, speculate. Basically, I think, you know, use the cliche is we just scratch the surface. If the international community work together and uh, using the tools we developed, you know, the CPAS uh, antibody test, we developed it really to monitor human immune response to vaccine. But the same test now is widely used by our collaborators through the WHO to examine animal series, animal antibodies. So I think with international collaboration and with much more improved surveillance tools, we should be able to really do an international collaboration and to map all the animals, as you say, as you said, you know, not only bats and pangolins and other wildlife, and be just open-minded and check out different geographic locations. Because now there are anecdotal sort of reports to say even human antibodies now, there are evidence of uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection as early as September uh, uh, 20. 19 in Europe. You know, of course, this data need to be verified, but if it's true, then it's not impossible for animals as far from Europe to South East Asia can carry related virus to COVID-19. Plenty of investigation to do. Professor Wang, thank you very much for your perspectives. We've been speaking there to Professor Wang Linfa from the Duke NUS Emerging Infectious Diseases Programme.